Hey there. So in this video, I want to take a look at setting all of our hard work up in Blender to create a 3D barbed wire mesh. Or, well, it's going to be like a 2D plane-ish, but in a 3D space. And you'll see what I mean in a second. But let's go ahead and just create the mesh first, and then we'll figure out how to do all of this as we go. So I'm going to create a new plane. And in edit mode, what I want to do is cut it down the center there. And let's get rid of both of these sides. So that I'm just going to have this edge here with a vertex on either end. So now let's go and create a screw modifier. And that's going to help screw it around. And I want to make sure that it's going to be on the X axis. And we're not going to see anything. And that's because in edit mode, we're going to have to move this guy on the Y axis. So I'm going to move it one meter negative. So it's going to be towards me. And you can see what it's done is it's pretty much just screwed it around in a circle here. However, what we can do is using the modifier, go ahead and actually move this off, right? To give it a bit of an offset. So I'm gonna do maybe around, let's try 1.5. And I actually wanna scale this down to about 50%. So we'll scale it down on the X about 0.5. So now what we can do, if I just go and make sure to merge each new iteration of it, is go and just pretty much bring this up infinitely. And hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here, right? Is this is kind of the general barbed wire frame that you would see as this wire starts to coil around. Now that we've got our mesh set up, let's go and actually create the material first, which is gonna make the next part a little bit easier. So I'm gonna come up into my shading workspace here. And really we don't need to view this quite yet, but let's go and create a new material. And I'm gonna call this barbed wire and we can go and bring in our textures so i'm going to select our principal bsdf and just hit Control t because i have the node wrangler add-on enabled otherwise you can just go ahead and hit shift a and start to type in image texture and we're also going to be using mapping and texture coordinate although we're going to be kind of circumventing this with a specific modifier but for right now i'm going to just leave them in so for our image texture, let's go ahead and select open. And now I wanna go and just bring in all of these different maps. And I wanna make sure that for each one of these extra images that I brought in, not including our base color, that I go and just change the color space to be non-color. And that's gonna be important because they're all grayscale images. And in this instance, even our normal map should be considered non-color because Blender is going to use a normal map node to kind of convert everything to be red accordingly. So now I can go ahead, start to plug in our metallic over onto our metallic, our normal into our normal. And again, let's go and search for a normal map node so we can actually convert that and it's going to be red correctly. Let's go and plug our roughness into our roughness. And I also want to use this opacity here to plug that in to our alpha. And so that's going to create this kind of weird black bit. And you can kind of see a little bit of our texture there. Don't worry, we're gonna fix that. But let's focus on trying to actually include this opacity. So what we can do is I'm gonna select that guy and come into our material panel. If we go all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see this settings option. And right now the blend mode is set to opaque. So it's not actually going to show that kind of alpha transparency there. But if I go and set this to something like, uh, let's do alpha blend, you can see now, right, we're going to be able to see through. And again, you can play around with alpha clip, alpha blend, alpha hashed. And actually I think for this, we should go ahead and use alpha clip instead. I kind of misspoke there. As well, I'm going to set our shadow mode to be alpha clip as well, so that these individual pieces are going to actually cast shadows and it's not going to require the mesh to cast shadows. So I'm back here in my layout workspace and we're gonna to have to think about how we can try and navigate this UV issue because uh, that's the reason why we're getting this weird distortion is it doesn't know how to unwrap this particular asset. Again, if we come back into our solid view here, right? It's just really pretty much a plane that's being wrapped around. But if we recall, the initial geometry that we're using is just an edge. 
So it doesn't really know how to unwrap that properly. And it's not as if we can go and just go, okay, unwrap this edge. It really doesn't work that way. So we're going to have a hard time trying to do this manually. And if I want to keep this procedural, say I want to just keep this as, you know, like a modifier here, and I can go and quickly change the amount of uh, iterations, right? If we go and take a look, this is very flexible and a good way to really model things. But if I was to convert this into a mesh, I would lose access to this modifier. So what we can do is go and use another modifier. And I'm going to use the UV warp. And you're going to see that we can actually use an object from, which is going to be the object itself, and use another object to kind of unwrap this particular asset. So if I go and add just another empty object here, right, it's going to just be this planes object. And I use this as our other cast object. Now, if I go ahead and start to move this, you can see it's actually updating the UVs and it's not altering at all the actual mesh itself. So if I go and move this on the Y, we'll move it that way, you can see that it's going to actually now position everything into the middle of our mesh. And actually what I will do is go ahead and let's just bring on wireframe so we can see what we're working with here. Maybe what I'll do is just scale this in a little bit. Maybe let's bring the screw down just a little bit. So that now I can just kind of move this back and forth, right? And you can see it's going to pretty much move those UVs. And so right now we can see it's a little bit uh, stretched, right? Not at all looking like how we had it initially. So if I go ahead and scale this on the Y, or actually, pardon me, scale this on the X, and I'm going to scale it inwards, we can see now that this is going to update the scale of our barbed wire. So all I've done is just simply gone ahead, scaled in this little guy here, and that's updated again the UVs of this piece here. So let's go and just make sure that again everything is kind of nice and centered there. It's going to be a little bit difficult because remember we actually kind of warped the uh, chain link material or the, sorry, the barbed wire material there. And I'll go and turn off our wireframe. So now very quickly we can go and create a nice barbed wire asset. I can go ahead and quickly update the iterations, maybe have more, have less. If I wanted to make them farther apart, I could go ahead and bring the screw amount up. And again, it's all going to update procedurally just based on this modifier here and based on the UVs that we've given from this empty asset. As well, just before I close this video out, I want to show you that you can also very quickly retopologize this or make it a higher or lower poly mesh just by simply going up to the steps viewport. And we can really bring this down, right? If you needed something kind of blocky for, you know, whatever sake, maybe this was far off in the distance, or if you wanted to really increase the number so it's a lot smoother, right? To get something that looks very crisp. And again, this is all going to be very non destructive and relatively procedural based on your modifier stack. So this has been a three part tutorial series on how we can go from creating a barbed wire material in Substance Designer from a height map to a finished texture set and set it up in Blender to actually create a 3D version of this asset. Again, I tried to be as flexible and as non-destructive as possible. And this combination from Substance Designer nodes to Blender modifiers is a pretty strong workflow that I kind of try to adhere to as best I can for my traditional workflow. As well, if you want to check out more game asset specific pipelines, check out my most recent course on creating a rat and rocking horse game asset from start to finish using Blender, Substance Designer, and Substance Painter. And we also go and take a look at how we can render this out back in Blender or Marmoset Toolbag 4. Thanks again for checking out the series. I hope it's been super helpful for you. And as always, I've been Chunk. Thanks for checking out the channel. Take it easy.